Hey guys, this is John, and I'm playing Econ Power in a three-minute game on chess.com. It's another clock as a weapon video. My opponent opens with the English. All right, busy day today, but I'm looking forward to playing five games of three-minute chess. Okay, A4, very early A4. Hmm. Okay, so that almost preempts knight bd7. Usually castles is the move. Interesting approach by my opponent here. Okay, I'm going to play a5. Yeah, and looks like they're going to get the pawn back. Hmm. Okay, I'm just going to play g6 and Fianchetto the dark score bishop. Took me a second to figure out how to proceed, but I think I feel all right with this. I'm actually thinking about playing knight d5. Trying to use the b4 square in the future. Also keeps an eye on b6. White could expand with e4. White does. Well, let's go here. Okay, and let's play bishop g4. Pressure on this guy. I think knight d7, and if h3, I'll take. Maybe play for e5 thereafter. I like my knight on b4. Nice stable piece. No pun intended. But if I had to part with the bishop pair, no big deal. All right, queen b3. Think about taking and playing e5. Just looking for some freedom. Bishop back to e6, also possible. Maybe I'll do that, just to pin white up. So instead of going after this knight, maybe I'll go after this knight. Yeah, let's take. All right, and e5 looks even more justified now. I'm hitting that pawn on d4. Also, this knight is a bit unstable. Knight b6 is a threat. Drive away the queen, then add in the queen as an attacker on d4. Hope you guys don't mind all of the uh, Blitz videos lately. I know I've been playing a lot of Blitz, but I've really been enjoying it. I'm working on my game. I'm a big believer in active learning. So always trying to improve myself, improve my own chess. And uh, it's cool that you guys are here for it as well. All right, so I'm thinking about take and queen e7, knight b6 maybe after that. Yeah, let's go here. Oh, he takes with the knight. Yeah, could play knight b6 or knight e5. That queen is going to c3, I think. I'm a bit behind on the clock, so I'd like to speed up, but I'm looking for a solid way forward here. Let's play queen... I think queen f6 is probably just going to be met. Let's go queen e7. I think queen f6 is going to be met by f4, so let's do this. Maybe queen c5 in the future. Like Now looks like a pretty good moment to play this. Yeah, I like my knight activity here. If there's a swap, I can try to play rook f d8, but I need to make up some of this time gap. White might play... Okay, hmm, that was unexpected. It's an interesting move, though. So let's play this rook over. I'm not going to take, because then after b takes, my knight on b4 gets punted away. So I'm not going to take yet. Maybe queen a7 now. Let's see if I can give white more than he bargained for with uh, keeping the tension. Yeah, I'm envisioning knight d3 being pretty good here. Could play it now. Knight d3. Yeah, that poses some concrete problems. So if there's a double capture here, I win d4 in the end. If this knight moves, then knight f2 is crushing. Knight f2 is going to win the house. I mean, knight f2 is just a massive threat. I'm also threatening the knight on d4. So this looks very good for me. I think I'm going to go up the exchange. So I'm guessing, yeah, this is going to be played. And let's keep things simple. Centralize the queen. Mm -hmm. Bully with the queen trade. And I'm going to dive right in here and attack this weak pawn take. This rook will join the action sometime very soon. Okay, b3. Um, let's go over here. I don't have to take this yet. Okay, now maybe this. Yeah, and go after b3 this way. And now we are good for launch here, I think. Let's play the rook in. Okay, let's take that guy. And... I'm gonna play. I'm gonna play this over just so Bishop D5 doesn't happen. Let's go here. Mm 
Hmm. Let's do this. Ooh, I gotta make sure I don't get myself mated. Let's give a check here. He has to take on Passant, otherwise Rook H5 is mate. Okay, and I get the checkmate. All right, I like how I played that one. I think Queen A7 was an important move. Queen A7 with that idea of Knight D3, getting both knights working in on the D3 square. Maybe my technique could have been cleaner after that. But yeah, White was playing a dangerous game by keeping this pin. Rook AD8 and Queen here. Already, I think white has to be pretty accurate in this position. Maybe something like queen e3 to attempt to break the pin, but yeah, should be winning after this knight gets in here, win the exchange. Yeah, again, maybe there's better ways to play it, but this looked pretty good under the time situation. Okay, so we take the opening game of the set. Sound like I'm announcing tennis. <laughs> But yeah, speaking of active learning, I think it's very important if you're trying to improve to make that the number one thing that you focus on. So always trying to actively learn. I think in chess, you really have to do first and foremost if you want to get better. So ideally playing your longer games. You know, I'm an experienced professional, play these long, these shorter games for uh, improvement purposes. But, you know, even, even for me, I don't think I'm getting significantly better by playing like this. If I really want to make strides, you know, tournaments, uh, other things involving a little bit more study makes sense. But uh, the, the foundation being longer games with analysis. Okay, so playing GM Shirov. Don't know who this is. Probably not Alexei Shirov. Maybe we'll check this later. So we're going to have a King's Indian. I'll play the same -ish variation. Yeah, let's go Knight GE2. Bishop e3, queen d2. Ooh, and a very early b5 from black. I don't rightly know how to respond to this. I'm going to take... And I wonder what the idea is if I just take. So let's accept the pawn and see what happens. I'm very curious, actually. Oh, okay, I think I've actually played into this before. Okay, take. And maybe knight f4 thereafter. Knight f4, knight g3. Let's go knight f4. So I don't want black dropping knight c4 anytime soon. So we'll do this. Bishop a6, I guess, trade in queen e2 maybe. I like the knight on f4, though, keeping an eye on d5. So yeah, let's take. Queen e2 looks pretty natural here. Let's do that. Just hit this rook, guard c4. Get ready to castle. Make black proof compensation. Okay, queen a8. So black's... Playing in the style of a Benko Gambit. Maybe rook over to b8 now. But let's continue applying pressure to weaknesses like d6. Yeah, I like this. I mean, these pawns are back. I do have to watch b2 in particular. Okay, g5. Interesting. Didn't see that coming. Enterprising move. So knight d3, there's maybe knight c4. So let's go knight h3. And I'm guessing he's going to play g4. And now I can go back to f4, or I can go to f2. Let's go to f2. And if there's a trade, maybe king h1, rook g1. I mean, there's still this hanging in the air. I was a bit distracted by what black was doing over there. Okay, d5. So black really playing this aggressive. Makes sense. It seems like a position that you do have to play aggressive if you want to get something. I'm thinking about just here and rook g1. I mean, I think if I can destroy this dark square bishop, even if I have to give up an exchange for it, it's going to be pretty good. So, yeah, rook g1, maybe with bishop h6, or even, like I said, rook takes g7, giving up an exchange wouldn't be completely out of the question here. Let's take with the knight. Also, I feel like king h1 is helpful if ever there's rook takes b2 stuff lurking. Okay, now which way do I take here? Mm, close call on this one. I think I'm going to take with a pawn. I get d5 as an outpost. That's pretty handy. I might use that right now. Let's do it. I'm threatening knight c7. Ah, maybe I'm not threatening knight c7 because there is queen takes e4. But this just seems like a handy move. If black's idea was to play rook g6 against rook g1, I'm fighting back against that. Okay, knight g6, very solid. Threatening b2. Ah, yeah, these, these pawns are weak, aren't they? Mm hmm 
Could take c5. Not sure about that, though. I'm also behind on the clock a little bit. Knight c7 still running into queen takes e4. I don't like that. This position seems critical. Really not sure how to play this. Okay, I'm going to do something kind of radical. I'm going to offer that exchange on a1 and see if black bites. Yeah, black doesn't bite. Interesting. Okay, so let's take other issues. Okay, I'm going to go here. Now I'm really behind on the clock. Not good time management, guys. Not good. Let's go here. Queen takes e4. Hopefully these trades work out all right for me. Win the rook on e8 at the end, but I have multiple pieces hanging. The time's a very big factor now, though. Uh, okay, there. Hmm. I think this is going to be bad for me. Yeah. I um, guess I'll take this way. Could just take, yeah, this is looking bad. Probably take b3. And I think I'm just going to be losing. Push my a pawn, but probably to no avail. Yeah, he'll come back and take that pawn. Okay, I'm going to resign this one. Hmm, well played in the complications by my opponent. Yeah, so I think I need a better way to continue after he plays knight g6. Knight g6 was a very good move. Kind of a defensive move that also unleashes his bishop. I really didn't know how to cope with that because knight c7 was a phantom threat in view of queen takes e4. So really not sure what to do there. Who is this GM, by the way? Let's take a look. Ah, I've played this player OTB before. Okay, Mongolian Grandmaster. Dash Sveg, Sharav Dorj. Yeah, he, he's a good, quick, solid player. Understands dynamics too, as you can see in this game. So interesting to run into him. Hope he's doing well. Yeah. Mm. Even this decision, I wasn't 100% sure. Maybe taking with the knight, although that leaves a too weak. I think when I played knight d5, I didn't realize the implications that would it have it would have here. So in hindsight, I think... Maybe here's where I should improve, something like rook g1. But okay, let's get back in the action. Grandmaster Hess, Robert Hess. All right, so another GM. Grandmaster filled session. Let's play knight f6 here. Hmm. Yeah, e3 is an interesting line. Um, I'll play e6. We'll go into a semi-slav. See how he handles this. b3. Hmm. How do I want to play against b3? Let's play bishop d6. I know there's a simplifying line with e5 that you can go for. Is it here? I think you can try it here, so I'll, I'll try it. Take. If the knight pops into b5, you can give a check on b4. Yeah, I believe this is supposed to be a totally fine way to play for black. Let's castle. Yeah, castle, castle. And now knight g6 maybe or just bishop e6 let's play bishop e6 i don't get into these iqp situations too often so isolated queen spawn where i'm the one with the iqp i'm usually fighting against the iqp so this will be good for my development <laughs> as a chess player maybe a6 next this is always a handy move control the b5 square I'm letting white take here, so if Bobby wants to take on e6, we'll let him. Shout out to Robert Hess, by the way. Great guy. Okay, f4. Mm, knight c6 seems forced. Otherwise, I run into f5. f4 is kind of surprising because that definitely weakens e3. Yeah, I'm... I think I'm pretty happy to see that move, unless he has some sort of devastating follow-up in mind, but I don't see it. He's burning clock. I might just take on d4 next. Okay, simple enough. 
And bishop here looks good. He's probably going to blockade here. But yeah, I'm liking this. Uh, again, I'm thinking about taking. Let's take and go queen here. Pressure on d4. I got this nice knight that can jump into the e4 square in the future. I think white's got to be careful here. Don't think this is what he wanted. Now, which way to take? Let's take with... Let me think about this for a second. Let's take with the queen. He's probably going to play queen d4. No, he goes queen there. Okay. Well, let's jump the knight in. Now, if rook c1, I probably will trade my queen for two rooks. That looks quite good to me. There's also some rook takes f4 ideas lurking maybe in the future. Look, if he plays bishop f3, I think I can play that, take advantage of the pin. Not sure if I'm threatening anything here, really. Maybe just queen back. Okay, I could play this now. Do I want to? I think I probably do. Let's play it. I mean, maybe he goes king h1. Yeah, king h1. But I can go over here. And if g3, there's knight takes g3. And his rook is patrolling the f2 square, but my knight is undoubtedly annoying for him. Okay, king back. Hmm. So I think now he has g3 in mind to try to free his position. So let's bring this back. Again, I think I'm still going to trade two rooks for the queen if ever he plays rook c1. I mean, I could play queen back to f8, actually. That may not be so bad. We'll see what he does. Maybe queen c3 next. Mm -hmm. Or queen c2 even. Queen c2 looks nice here. Let's do that. Infiltrate. If I can get my rook to the second rank via swap, I'm pretty happy. Mm -hmm. Let's go rook over here. Attack and defend. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's just take. Play like this. Keep it simple. Might just run my d pawn now. Or maybe play g5. Let's run the d-pawn. Put pressure on him with the clock situation as well. Okay, now I can give a check. Come. Okay, he is attacking that. Let's check again. Hmm. Let's go here. Let's check. Losing the threat a little bit, but the position's still very good for me, I think. Let's go here. I don't want rook e7. Rook e7 is a very annoying move at various times here, so we're going to play it like this. Rook e1 coming. Check. Fork. Yeah, now he's just going to get flagged. Okay. And he wants a rematch? Okay, let's play a rematch. Um, I'll play d4. Yeah, again, my technique wasn't perfect, but the clock situation was good. Okay, let's go knight f3. I'm going to play a tori, even though he hasn't fianchettoed. Or hasn't uh, played knight f6, I should say, in favor of the fianchetto. Okay, let's go knight bd2. So chalk one up for the IQP, having the IQP in that last game. E3, pretty sure I played this position before. Let's play bishop d3. Hmm, it's looking for a swap. Okay, I'll agree to that. Then let's castle. Mm -hmm. I'm going to keep my, my dark square bishop for the time being. Could be handy in the future. The way he's developing looks a little little suspect to me. He hasn't moved these pawns. Here I'm threatening to take and then take d7. Okay, 
Okay, I could take f6 and then knight d7, so that seems strong. It's going to take e5, I suppose, if I do. Knight c6 is another move, although I'm not sure knight c6 does much. Okay, let's take. Mm -hmm. I'm going to take here and play d5, I think. Let's see where that knight goes. See where he wants to put it. Okay, queen e2 maybe, or just b4. b4, knight d3 though. Okay, but let's invite that knight in. See if he really wants to play that. Knight d3, rook b1, and the knight may not make it out. That's going to be my argument. We'll see if it holds up. You could play f5 or something, but e4 maybe? Gives up the f4 square. But make him figure it out. Pretty close on the clocks here. Does play f5. Now let's play e4. He does have these double pawns, which could be a little bit awkward. We shall see. I played three games, right? Just worried I didn't chalk up a result. Yep, three games so far. Okay, and he's starting to think, kind of like he did in the last game. Queen b7, unusual move. So looking at the d5 pawn, I'm guessing. Queen b3, I think, is pretty standard here. Now knight f4, maybe rook e1. Yeah, he could take on e4 and just try to win d5, although I think I'm pretty happy with that development. Could play just f3 here. And solidify things. Yeah, maybe I'll do that. Be able to take with a pawn if ever he captures. Mm -hmm. That's a good move. Okay, queen c3 or queen b2. Maybe queen c3. Attack this guy. Okay, check. Mm-hmm. Ah, now knight d3. Knight d3 is not a threat, I suppose. Okay, so let's go here. Try to keep the tempo going. I'm definitely not better at this point, though, that's for sure. But he has a lot of options. Maybe he'll go wrong. Rook e8. Good move again. He does not go wrong. <laughs> okay. So let's go. We've got to be careful I don't get my queen trapped. So I guess I'm going to step here. Take a knight g5. Looking for maybe queen c4 ideas. It's a little bit vague though. Okay, now he's starting to mate. Okay, check. We may have an end game. Okay, check again. Oh, can he go king h6? Yeah, kind of walked into that one. Now knight takes g2, looks strong. Knight takes on g2. All right, well. Got to centralize the knight and see what happens. Some knight g4 ideas in mind. Okay, take. Queen e4 looks good here. He's good at finding such moves, so I'm pretty sure he'll play that. Ooh, he takes. That I'm a little surprised by. All right, well, got to try to play this endgame. All right, well, I think under the circumstances, this is about the best that I could have hoped for. Which is pretty passive for me. I don't think I'm defending this so well. But maybe hope. Let's go here. Now he got his rook in a weird situation. Uh, let's check. Okay. 
Okay, and I think we're probably gonna have a draw. Okay, so game drawn. I will take it because I was busted there. I guess in hindsight, if I really wanted to go for the flag, I should have kept my rook on the board, but <laughs> I think draw is totally fair. All right, I like to play this line against b3, so let's play it like this. Go e6 next. Uh, let's play knight f6. Interesting setup by him. Okay, I'm going to go g6, bishop g7. I think I can do that. And he's going aggressive. Okay, let's play knight c6. Usually I'd prefer to put the c-pawn in front, but I think i got to prioritize development here. And... Let's go a6 next. I wonder if he's going to go for f5 type ideas. f5, I can maybe take, take knight d4, and knight takes f5, so he may not be ready for that. a6 seems helpful, though. It prepares queen d6. Okay, yeah, I wonder if I can take... I'm going to try it. I might be asking for it here. Like, maybe queen g2, knight takes f5, bishop d3 is good. I'm not sure. Yeah, so he's going to play... And I can go knight h5 or rook g8, maybe. This looks like a lot of compensation I'm giving him, though. King f8? Yeah, he's got to check on a3 eventually. Yeah, I don't like what I did here. This bishop d3 move is annoying. Okay, I'll play rook g8, I guess. I may have to bail with my king to d7. So let's say there's a trade and a check. King d7, I think, is going to be forced. This king f8, bishop a3 was not looking too hot. So, you know, I've had a better pawn structure before. I mean, queen f3 is looking just good here. He's going to go more forcing, though. Mm -hmm. Yep, yeah, that's good. Let's play c6. Continue trying to play fast, because my position's bad. If I use use time on the clock, it's just going to get even worse for me. So, got to prioritize playing quick here. Ooh, nice one. That's a nice shot. Very nice shot. He practices his tactics, Mr. Hess. Oh, but uh, do I have check? Now even that doesn't matter. He just takes it. Yeah, I think that's probably going to be decisive. So if I take, queen takes f7, I'm just losing everything there. Yeah, that's a nice one. I'm going to I'm gonna give a check, just in the off chance that he doesn't take it. <laughs> and I can take, and I'm guarding f6, so yeah, let's resign that. Okay, so we lost that last one. Tell Robert, good games. That was a nice tactic there at the end. Yeah, I think... Uh, one blunder is probably going to be the knight d4 decision. Maybe even g takes f5, like I said, was pushing it. Because I think this position is pretty bad. For just a single pawn, white has a massive initiative. So I do not like that. Interesting approach here with f4, queen f3, knight c3, castles queenside, like a really quick castles long, and then play for the initiative. And again, here... King d7, it's super ugly, but I think it's forced because knight e4, I mean, white can just play d3 or f3 if they want and, and win the attack knight. I'm even pinned with my bishop here to the rook on g8. And if king f8, that runs smack dab into bishop a3. Okay, so I finished on two and a half out of five. So 50% for this session, but four of the five games were against Grandmasters and the very first game against Econ Power. That player was well over 2,600. So... Not a bad session. Hope you guys enjoyed it. It was a lot of fun. I still have plenty of uh, Americano to go, so I'll be drinking that while I post this video. So thanks, as always, for watching, guys. Really, really appreciate it. And I'll be back again soon with another video. Bye.